Welcome back. We're looking at the ISX 871 after treatment injector, also called the number seven injector by some people. Cummins calls it the doser injector or the dosing unit. It's bolted on with two bolts onto a cast iron flange that bolts to the back of the turbocharger turbine housing, which is the exhaust housing. And it has two water ports on it, and it has one fuel port that you see right on top. It has an electrical connector that the ECM connects to. This injector is pulsed by the ECM. It's not a direct on-off voltage. And the ECM controls how much fuel it's putting in and how fast by the pulse width. The injector is bolted on the pipe with two bolts. You'll see the gaskets a little later. The ECM can log fault codes on the electrical part of the injector and the mechanical part if it thinks it's injecting, but it sees no heat in the after treatment. This is the bottom of the injector, uh, the part that's bolted on the pipe. And you can see there, there's a large area there. That's where that, around the center, there's a large open area. That's where the big, thick heat gasket goes. You'll see that a little later. And this injector has what's called a poppet in it. If you see that uh, insert that looks like it's pressed in, that's the poppet. And the poppets are the new style injector. And when you see that, those are... Uh, both be self-cleaning. They do do a pretty good job of self-cleaning. On the older ones, you had to take it off and you had to clean it with a brass brush and some decarb until that tip was nice and clean. And if you didn't, it wouldn't spray properly. They tried to get away from that and it's been fairly successful with this. Uh, once in a while, that poppet will fall out. When it does, you'll know because there'll be fault codes that are related to overfueling for the after treatment system. This is where you can physically find the part number. It's stamped. This number is a 5294110. So you may have to clean rust off to find it. You'll find out in a minute why you need to know that. Here's the mounting gasket kit. You can see the white thick heat gasket that's in there. You'll see a flip side of this in a second. There's that heat gasket, a steel gasket, and two mounting bolts. That's all that's in this mounting kit. And there's a steel gasket. And uh, the white gasket and the steel gasket really aren't directional. You can put them on either way, but the white's got to go in the injector. This is an illustration of how the injector bolts up. When we get started here, you see the red arrow. That hole won't be there. The green holes might. The red arrow hole was for an oxygen sensor, which is not on the 871 system. Those other two smaller holes are for uh, a lot of times a heat shield that you can bolt on there. So may have it, may not, may be mounted there, may not, depends. So this is a pretty simple setup. The doser injector bolts on with a couple of those bolts. Uh, you got a plug that you plug in. It has a water line in, water line out. It has to be water cooled. Also, it has a fuel line going to it. And that fuel line number four uh, is pressurized by that valve we looked at in the last video. That's what supplies the fuel to this. And then when this is all done injecting fuel, that valve will shut off, drop the pressure to zero, and the ECM will open up the injector to let any pressure that's in there out so that the injector doesn't dribble fuel because that's what causes them to carbon up on the tips. Uh, fault code wise, you'll have fault codes on this if you have electrical connections. If the ECM decides that the injector is injecting as much fuel as it's allowed to inject by the software controls, but it actually needs to inject more to get the after treatment hot. You'll get a fault code that says it's reached its maximum limit. And when you see that, that just means that either the tip's plugged, the injector's not working right, something else is wrong, you need to clean the tip, something like that. There's a reset that you do in Insight that drops that back to the let's call it the starting dosing amount. 
And it's all about how much it doses uh, or is allowed to dose as it's trying to heat that after treatment up until it gets it to the temperature it needs to have it at, which is about 1,040 degrees. So if it can't get it up to over 1,000 degrees and the ECM has pulsed longer on, shorter off, remember it's pulse width, the longer it's on, when it's ever it's on, that pop it's open and that fuel pressure, that, that 275 pounds is coming in and that's what's causing that thing to, to mist. It's, there's no pump, nothing else. It's pure pressure driving it. And when the ECM shuts that off, uh, a needle drops down in the seat and no more fuel is allowed out. So how long that, that little stop needle inside that injector is held up is what determines how much fuel goes back. And then the ECM watches the temperatures in the after treatment and it learns how much it needs to send back in how much time basically to get that temperature up to where it needs to be so that it can successfully regen, but not overheat the after treatment and cook it. There's a couple tests that you can do on this injector. So if you're going to do the test, the first thing you do, take it off and you should clean carbon off the tip if it's loaded up. If the tip just looks wet and dirty or just a little bit dirty, but you can see the outline of the very center, you're probably okay. So you're going to do um, the leak test first. And when you do this, uh, Cummins has a, a kit you buy, a tool kit that's got an extended harness and an extended injector feed line. The water lines you take off, they have caps for them to cap them because uh, you have to have water because you have to run the engine for five minutes or so for the one. So you take the uh, injector off and you do the leak test first. Now, when you go into the test, it says after treatment diesel particulate filter injector test. There's a leak test and a flow test. You click the drop down, pick leak test, and then you have the injector clean, wiped off, dried. And again, it's not on the engine anymore. It's down you know, by the tire setting on top of the graduated container that's, that's graduated in one milliliter divisions or one cc. They're the same thing. And you start the test, the leak test, and the engine's running. And what it'll do is it will pressurize that housing we just looked at with about 275 pounds of pressure. And then you're going to watch that injector to see if it drips. And it shouldn't. Now, there is a spec if the injector drips, you're allowed to have less than 60 cc's of fuel collected in one minute or 60 seconds. Typically, a new injector won't drip at all. Uh, maybe at the end of a minute, it might be a little a half a drop on a tip, but they don't, they don't leak. But if they do leak a little bit, you do have a little leeway. You don't have to throw the thing away and get another one. 60 cc's is the cutoff, or 60 milliliters. The next test is the flow test. So you'd empty your container out if there's any fuel in it, and you're going to run the flow test for 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the 871 after treatment injector. And you should be collecting between 250 and 430 milliliters of fuel. If you have less than 250, then you need to clean the tip with a brass brush and decarb and try the test again. If you have more than 430, then if the injector is a 368, 3570 part number, you automatically replace it. That's the old style. If it's the new poppet style and it flows more, then you have to replace it too. Uh, it can flow, if it flows less than the, than the 250, you clean it. If it flows more than 430, and by the way, you do three tests in a row and you average the results. So, you know, if, if the spec is 430 and it flows 432, I'm not going to throw the injector away. 
Uh, if there's a problem with it, it's going to flow probably 480 and up. It's going to be over considerably. And that's it for the test. When you do, uh, when you're all done, if you had the catalyst out, you can do a reset. And that reset will make that injector go back to the minimum amount of flow. And then the, you have to do a stationary regen after that. I should say you should. And that first regen will take about an hour and 40 minutes because that injector is going to be barely injecting any fuel, pulsing any fuel, because the ECM is learning the injector, how much is going back, and it's learning how the cat is responding in terms of temperature that it's making. So as time goes on, this system is self-learning. So if that injector carbons up and it doesn't quite spray as much, the system will go, okay, we need to put more fuel in there. It knows that by the heat being made across the DOC, okay? So that's why it's important that those temperature probes are accurate and that there's no face plugging on a DOC so that they're open. And that's all there is to that injector. Again, fault codes on it will be, it's reached, its, if it says the uh, after treatment injector has reached its limit, that means it's flowed to the max. It can't flow anymore. It's not allowed to flow anymore by the software. And there's something wrong. Uh, half the time, the problem is down by the cat being face plugged or whatever. The other half, maybe there's the injector's plugged or it just failed internally because injectors do fail and then you have to replace it. Okay, the next video you see will be just a... Uh, a summation of this after treatment system and I'll talk a little bit about general fault codes on it and then we'll be moving on and starting into the 23 2250 after treatment which is considerably different with a lot more parts and uh, fairly more complex okay thanks for joining me see you next time